Thanks very much, uh, Emer, and you're all really welcome, both online and in person here today. And it is the fifth EPA Climate Change Conference. So really delighted to welcome you. Um, as Emer was saying, the sheer level of participation in the event shows how interested uh, people are and how relevant the topic is. Um, and not only is it great to see many familiar faces, it's also great to see many new faces uh, as well. So there's the people who have been long soldiering on this topic, as well as, as I said, many new people, um, and from a range of different sectors. Um, and I'll talk about the, the speakers now in a moment. Um, as Emer was saying, over 800 people between online and hybrid. Um, and the topic of today being Ireland living in a changing climate. Um, and I think that's something really important to reflect on uh, because we often think of climate change as something that's going to happen to other people in other continents at some stage into the future. That is not the situation. We are living in a clim uh, changing climate in Ireland here and now. So over the course of today, our speakers will lead our discussion of the current phys physical impacts of climate change in Ireland and the impacts on our people, our environment, our infrastructure, and the strategic adaptation responses from a policy, fiscal, and physical perspective. So I also, of course, have to really appreciate all of our speakers for giving their time and energy to present at this event today. Our morning session, the intent is to set the scene. So we're going to hear from the Secretary General of the Department of Environment, Climate Change and Communications, uh, Ms. Una Buckley, who, um, as well as Dr. Hans uh, Martin Fussel uh, from the European Environment Agency, who will provide both a national and EU policy perspective on climate adaptation. Following our coffee break, we're going to be joined by our keynote speaker, Mr. Gabriel McAloof, the Governor of the Central Bank of Ireland, who will provide an economic and financial perspective on climate change adaptation in Ireland. Um, and this is the first time, really, I suppose, we've had such a central focus on finance. And I suppose the two worlds of finance and environment coming together. Um, and it's a really important that we work with each other because a lot of the solutions, of course, to climate change are going to need financial input. And also, we, all, we, we know and we see that when we're impacted by climate change, it is often a financial impact as well as all of the other impacts. So, you know, when there's flooding, etc., you know, people's homes are destroyed, people's businesses are destroyed, and there's a significant financial aspect to that. So it's really good that we're able to combine those two worlds. Before lunch, we're going to hear from uh, Dr. Connor Murphy of Maynooth University and Dr. Claire Scannell of Met Aaron, who will really bring to life the observed and projected climate change in Ireland. Then when we move into the afternoon session, it's really around providing insights on dealing with climate change at the front line. Um, so living and adapting to climate change in Ireland. And we're going to hear from David Joyce of Cork City Council, Cormac McCarthy of Waterways Ireland, Martha Fa uh, Farrell of the Maharese Conservation Association, and Paul Brophy of Paul Brophy Produce. So really uh, hearing uh, from the horse's mouth, as it were, with regard to the front line. But maybe just to touch briefly on the EPA's role on climate adaptation. And climate adaptation has really become central to the EPA's climate change remit. And of course, our remit also includes emission statistics, climate science and international engagement, climate research, behavioral insights, and the administration of the, Europe or the European trading scheme, the ETS scheme, uh, as well as now a carbon border adjustment mechanism, which is coming uh, into Europe, which is a significant undertaking. So on climate adaptation, overall, there is now a, an awful lot happening in the climate adaptation space. And the EPA's evidence and data on the impacts of climate change informs the overall Ireland's approach to adaptation. The EPA plays a key role in national adaptation governance and implementation structures by delivering across the areas of climate risk, climate services, and evidence and knowledge. We're leading on Ireland's first national climate change risk assessment, which is due for publication next year. And the primary output will be a national climate risk register and associated urgency ratings for a priority risk and as well as opportunities 
and risk owners. This major national resource will provide a basis and support for making decisions on the acceptability of climate risk to Irish society, and it can be used by policymakers and stakeholders in national and sectoral climate adaptation planning, um, as well as supporting action to mitigate unacceptable risks um, of climate. We also, of course, have the national adaptation uh, platform, Climate Ireland, which, provided by the EPA, delivers information, guidance and resources for adaptation in Ireland. And last but not least in this space, the EPA also coordinates the Climate Ireland Adaptation Network, which is all about practitioners and practitioners coming together to share information, expertise and experience. So those working on adaptation uh, in Ireland sharing their experiences. The EPA research programme has been running for many, many years, uh, really focusing on support uh, and policy support uh, uh, through research. And we develop research capacity in climate adaptation and we support adaptation planning through environmental monitoring and reporting. But on the research side of things, just to highlight, and there is a, a, a stand outside, our research call is open. So for those of you in the audience, either physical or hybrid or online, uh, we have a research call open at the moment, and we'd really encourage uh, people to participate in it. Last year, we had 40% of the research awards were to people who hadn't participated in the research programme before. So we're really always welcoming new researchers to come in and uh, to, uh, to work with us. On um, mitigation and adaptation, because the focus of today is around adaptation, but of course mitigation and adaptation are inherently linked. The more warming experienced, the greater the challenge of adaptation. The IPPC sixth assessment report is clear that widespread rapid changes in the atmosphere, ocean, cryosphere and biosphere have already occurred across the globe. Europe is warming at twice the global average rate, with the three warmest years on record across the continent recorded since 2020. In Ireland, Met Air and observations show that 2023 was the warmest year on record to date, beating the previous warmest year of 2022. Observed heat waves and, and heavy rainfall events are becoming more frequent in Ireland and more severe. And I think all of us can resonate with that, with uh, you know, the, the winters uh, as well as the summers we've had over the last number of years. We can see it uh, in, our, in our everyday interactions, in our everyday uh, uh, work um, and uh, home life as well. Sea level around Ireland has risen by approximately two to three millimetres a year since the early 90s. And both surface, uh, sea surface temperature and ocean heat content have increased in Ireland's ter territorial waters. In Irish waters, there's been changes in marine ecosystems, including changes in seasonality and the abundance of many species. Ireland's climate change assessment tells us that we are likely to see increases in the frequency and magnitude of such climate hazards. They're going to lead to a range of direct, cascading, compound and transboundary risks for Ireland including increased risks of wildfire, wildfires, an increase in invasive species, risk to food supply, and again, we're already discussing that this year in the context of tillage, increases in flooding and drought events, which impact on water supply, biodiversity, the built environment, and of course, we're also seeing, and will continue to see, increases in the frequency of coastal flooding and erosion. So this is going to require us to think differently in terms of spatial and infrastructural planning and construction. This means that our roads, rail, energy, communications, food supply, water supply, health services and buildings will need to be constructed and situated to be resilient to these changed future conditions. We must also recognise there's a limit to what infrastructure can achieve and we'll need to be more dynamic, uh, we'll also need to have more dynamic and robust emergency planning and response systems and services to manage the extreme events that will occur and particularly to be looking after the vulner vulnerable populations. And we're going to hear later today of the findings from the adaptation volume of the ICA report uh, that was published earlier this year and we're delighted to have that Professor Connor Murphy can be with us here today. 
At a high level, the assessment found that Ireland needs to adapt to these ongoing and future climate change impacts. Implementation of adaptation action is too slow, it's too fragmented, and doing better requires financing, working with people in nature, monitoring and evaluating outcomes, and increasing public and private sector involvement. While many sectors have developed adaptation plans, many have shown limited progress in implementation. Other sectoral plans are missing, including the built environment, tourism, sport, and the financial services, while cross-cutting issues such as coastal environments also need to be addressed. Critically, developing a climate-resilient Ireland will require sufficient public and private investment and financial support. Effective adaptation action will bring even wider benefits for health, well-being and nature and sustainable economic development. So we're not just doing it for the sake of it. There is strong economic as well as social uh, uh, benefits to do this work. The latest climate change in the Irish Mind study shows what Irish people think with regard to climate change. And it shows that nearly 9 in 10 people in Ireland think climate is affecting the weather in Ireland, with 75% thinking extreme weather poses a high or moderate risk to their community over the next 10 years. Irish people are positive about the economic and quality of life benefits that could be achieved through climate action. A majority also support climate action policies, with over 50% thinking climate action will improve economic growth and create jobs while two-thirds say taking, climate act or taking action to reduce climate change will improve the quality of life for people in Ireland. So people in Ireland understand the risks and are positive about action. Our knowledge around the impacts of climate change is constantly improving. How uncer however, uncertainties always remain. Crucially, we have enough, enough knowledge to act and inaction is not an option. The IPCC highlight the urgent need for action to reduce greenhouse gas emissions while adapting to current and future impacts of climate change. It's not an either or. We must make progress on both and we must make progress quickly. So finally, um, I'd like to thank you all for attending today. Um, I think you're going to find it a really, really interesting day. We've great lineup of speakers, as I said, and look forward to lively discussions in the Q&A. Thank you very much.